Um, I'll try to make this quick. I know we're over time and, and everybody's ready to go. Um, so at Rackspace, we, uh, we came up with an interesting problem uh, in, in the hosting domain that we wanted to uh, host MySQL databases. Um, and we decided to uh, work along the, the lines of uh, the OpenStack project because we're highly involved with that. Um, and so uh, at the time, OpenStack really only supported uh, Zen and KVM. And one of the things that we learned um, through a lot of performance testing was that, uh, that um, VMs and, and databases don't typically tend to get along very well. Uh, and so we, we started doing a lot of investigation with uh, container, uh, containerizing. We looked at just manually uh, using tools to, to do the C groups. We also looked at LXC, which at the time was, this is about three years ago, so it was a lot more immature than it is now. Um, and, we, and we ended up settling on OpenVZ. Um, the, the reasons were, you know, if, as far as regarding Container, containerizing, which of course everybody in here is obviously fans of containers, um, was that it gave us better performance. Um, one of the, our requirements were that we needed to have true resource isolation and separation as, as, as much as possible um, within the container, uh, and that we had to be able to set the uh, disk access priority um, and, and be able to guarantee disk access uh, to each individual subscriber depending on their subscription level. Uh, and then also we had, uh, within our architecture and design, we had to have uh, multiple network interfaces uh, on multiple VLANs. Um, so why we chose OpenVZ, at the time we really, uh, we really liked the, the tools. Um, the, uh, the tool set was very mature. Um, we found that you know, it, was, uh, it had been the open source component of Virtuoso, which had been around for some time at the time. Uh, and so we really, we really felt like that was the right tool for us to use. Um, the features that really brought us to it was the checkpointing, um, and, and I know that now uh, Kriu is bringing this to, to the, to the uh, LXC world. Um, live migrations was a really big piece of that for us, um, being able to live migrate um, a MySQL database server as it was running um, was, was a real powerful uh, tool. And it's not just the migration is key to the cloud. Without migration, you don't have orchestration. Effects. Absolutely. Um, and uh, uh, w during some testing with uh, LXC and, and OpenVZ, we ran into some kernel uh, memory issues. And one of, one of the powerful things, tools that we had in the OpenVZ side at the time um, was the ability to limit uh, the kernel memory. Uh, everybody, does anybody not know what Nova is? I don't want to go into that. Yeah? OK. Uh, Nova is, is an open source uh, piece of the OpenStack project. Um, it's, uh, a Python application layer that lets you uh, use, a, it creates an API that allows you to manage, uh, create and manage um, containers and uh, virtual hosts. Um, you think of it as a really nice and unified K, uh, API for managing KVM and Zen and, and LXC. Um, at the time, it, it, there was no support for, oh, yes. Unfortunately, I wasn't involved when that happened, um, so I gathered some information for this particular presentation, and I probably should have gotten some more specifics on that particular one. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, we have, so within, within the, the project that we use uh, to, to create these database servers, um, we also have command and control agents, and we ran into to some, some issues um, when the command and control agents were trying to run some certain things. It's basically, this is a security feature because except uh, in, it's the user memory plus there's the kernel memory and by creating some malicious application, malicious program, it can eat all the, all the kernel memory and lead to you know, global denial of service. So in order for, to provide full containers isolation, the kernel memory can, should be limited on a per container basis. And this feature is like almost up through, right? Yeah. We're, we're getting it. This will hopefully be in 2.6.13. But it's not just malicious applications. There are some applications you would consider not to be malicious that do silly things. Like yeah. there are backup applications that will suddenly suck up all the pages in your page cache or what have you. So there are plenty of uh, saying badly written applications would probably be a better way of putting it that you have to have on your system because they're supplied by a dollar proprietary vendor, but which you'd like to containerize just to make sure they limit the damage. 
So um, to give you an example, uh, some application, if you open up a lot of file descriptor, for example, and also they have a web server, they open a lot of socket that could easily just exhaust the kernel slabs. So that's all counted as kernel memory. Well, that's part of it. I mean, now it, it wasn't, but now it is. Right. Yeah, and I apologize. I, I wanted to preface this by saying that some of these decisions were made three years ago and two years ago. Um, so some, some of these things have come to LXC or have come to the mainstream kernel. Some of them are, are on their way. Um, and so within Nova, our challenge was that, you know, LXC was mostly supported. According to users, it was in various states of broken. Um, and so I know as of now, it's a, it's a lot more mature. Uh, and so we, we, in, we went and, and wrote a uh, OpenVZ driver for Nova. So if you're actually interested in using Nova and setting up an OpenStack cluster uh, and running OpenVZ containers, um, it, we open sourced the driver. Um, we attempted to, to contribute it to the, OpenStack pro the official OpenStack project, um, and they, they didn't like the implementation. So we're currently working on reworking the, the code. But um, if you want to play with it now, the features right now, it does all the CRUD operations. It'll do live migrations. Um, and it can do resizes in place without having to do migrations of the actual guest um, uh, OS. Uh, and, it, and we do also support attaching raw volumes uh, within, uh, from the host within the, uh, the container itself. So, so for the live migration, have you guys do some benchmarking and see how that? I, I would say that. that when we test the live migrations, we are running benchmarks against the database uh, to, uh, to, to see the effects on what the user will see, because that's really our biggest concern. Uh, and we, we almost never even see an effect, but when we do, it usually is uh, a short TCP pause during the live migration. Uh, and when I say short, it's, it's like sub 10 seconds, and that's just to move the entire database over. I know that that's a pretty long time in database, ter in database terms, but uh, in the grand scheme, we, we found it to be a lot better than shutting everything down and, and moving it over. And about live migration, as it is implemented currently in OpenVZ, we, we don't use stuff like iterative memory migration yet, because we will use it with Creo and we'll be able to further the, you know, reduce the downtime, the frozen time, the time then the container is frozen. We already do that for the file system. We do the iterative block migration while on the running container, and we'll do the same with memory. So it's going to improve. Um, so features that are coming next in the OpenVZ driver for Nova is uh, vSwap support. Um, and we want to expose some more tunables the way that OpenVC works, works through uh, a beam counter system. And so we want to expose those uh, a little more. Um, currently, it works for Debian derivatives. Um, but there is some stubbing in there for Red Hat derivative supports. Um, and then, as I said, uh, because our implementation is pure Python and standalone, um, and the Nova community preferred that we do all of our work through libvirt, um, there's beginning work on making libvirt work with OpenVZ properly and, and making the libvirt driver in Nova work. So um, eventually that support, the OpenVZ support will be there in Nova. Um, we're just, we're pushing forward with, with small patches. Uh, so what are the district specific differences that you have to implement? Uh, could you give some examples? Um, uh, so what comes to mind is um, in so the way that Nova wants to manage your interfaces is that Nova wants to know about those interfaces um, and, and doesn't want a user space tool to be in charge of it so that there's a lot of power in VZCTL being able to set uh, you know different distros uh, interfaces up but then Nova doesn't know about those and so because of that limitation we had to implement setting network information basically replicating a lot of the work that was done in VZCTL but implementing it in the Python driver uh, and so those partic that particular uh, use case is, is why we, we had to separate those out. So that's, that's where the Red Hat support comes in. Um, other than the networking interfaces, everything else should, should work. So it, it should be a short hurdle to make Red Hat-based uh, uh, distributions work. OpenStack, oh, I'm coming to that. 
Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get there quickly, I promise. What's that? Uh, so th there's a little bit of collaboration going on. Um, hopefully we're, we're going to get um, some help with fixing. There's, there's some issues within libvirt um, and dealing with OpenVZ. And so hopefully we can get some, we're, we're, we're looking for help with that. Um, and I've committed my own personal time to, to working on the libvirt driver for Nova. Yeah, so there, there, there are, there already is some some support for OpenVZ within libvirt. I mean, it, it claims to support it, and it does. Mostly, there's some odd bugs um, involved, but you you can use tools like Verse to be able to manage those. Now, when you're dealing with Nova um, and OpenStack uh, in general, you know those tools need to know about what's going on. So. Yeah, I, it's not prevented for you to use things like Verse to manage those VMs, but it's discouraged because then you're doing, you're, you're exercising control outside of the, the knowledge of, of Nova. Um, and so uh, the, the product that, or not the product, but the project that Rackspace started um, to, to um, create these uh, relational and non-relational database uh, guests um, the project is called, is called Trove. It's been accepted into the OpenStack community or the OpenStack Foundation as an official project. Um, and as I said, it, it's, it is designated for SQL and NoSQL solutions. Currently, um, we've got MySQL was the base product. That's what we, you know, we had that, we had that itch and so that's what we scratched. Um, there is a, a Redis uh, project coming along very nicely. Um, and I know that uh, there is a lot, there's some work being done by Mirantis. Uh, to build in support for uh, Cassandra uh, and MongoDB. Uh, and and we, there, there's many companies behind it. It's not going anywhere. It's something that we're going to continue to develop on. So if it's something that you're interested in, um, we are in the, uh, the OpenStack-Trove channel on Freenode and love to have discussions about it. Um, coming really soon, backups and restores, monitoring, uh, clustering and replication is a little bit later on, but it's getting there. Um, and so I won't bore you with a bunch of uh, my marketing department was like, here, throw these slides in here and do all these cool things. Um, we did run some, some benchmarks to kind of prove containers over virtualization for, for databases. And so we, we ran benchmarks against um, one, of our, you know, one of our competitors um, and, who uses virtualization. And we ran benchmarks against our, our uh, solution uh, to see what, you know, what the differences really were to, to quantify uh, that. And uh, we just use Sysbench, just something to generate a, a consistent load, a 75% read, 25% write uh, split. And we ran it against all the flavors that, AW, uh, that Amazon had and all the flavors that we supported. Um, and some disclaimers here, obviously, you know, Sysbench is not an indication of what your application is going to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so that one of the metrics that we focused on was the, ability, the, the, the number of transactions per second that we could support within the infrastructure. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously more is, is better. We found that the sweet spot for MySQL hosted in, in, in these hosting situations, around 50 threads was the, was the sweet spot for performance. Um, and the, uh, the difference in performance you can see here is, is our, what we call our product is cloud databases. Around 50, we were able to get about 2,000 uh, uh, transactions per second. Uh, Amazon also was, about, was able to get around 2,000 transactions per second. The difference, though, is that we were able to do that with a 16 gigabyte sized container, whereas at Amazon we had to uh, have a 68 gigabyte uh, VM host in order to in order to pull that off. Um, so we think we we think we've shown that you know clear wins for containers. Uh, obviously, there are use cases where containers aren't the best solution, and there are solu there are uh, use cases where VMs uh, aren't the best solution, and we think that that databases is that. Um, and I. Thank you very much for your time and some links for your viewing pleasure. So yes, this Nova GitHub link doesn't contain the driver, right? What's or that? it's there as a branch? The, so because oh, the okay. current implementation of the OpenVZ driver is not in Nova proper, yeah, we do have a, 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 a <coughs> GitHub uh, StackForge is the OpenStack uh, GitHub branch. 
but yes, it's, it's there for consumption and, and available for installation. Any other questions? Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. And thanks, everyone, for attending the microconference and for staying uh, an extra 15 minutes so that we could go through all the content. Uh, we actually skipped the uh, user namespace talk um, because, well, we sadly don't have the time. Um, if you're interested in uh, user namespaces, you can come and talk to Serge or uh, to Eric, who wrote it. Uh, <laughs> And we'll be glad to talk about it. Um, Serge and I, at least, are still there all day long tomorrow. So please feel free to just come and talk to us. Uh, we're always glad to discuss containers. Thanks very much.